Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbish rahli sadri wa sirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Rabbi zidni ilma Allahumma faqihna fi ddeen Allahumma arina alhaqqa haqqan wa dhuqna attiba'ah wa arina albatila batilan wa dhuqna jitinabah Oh Allah, show us the truth as true and inspire us to follow it show us falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it how are you all i hope that all of you are in best of your health i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he safeguard and protect you all may he bless you all with health and comfort may he protect you all from every disease sedition and any harmful thing may he bless your time in life with baraka May he bless us with the ability and willingness to do abundant good deeds in the month of Ramadan. May he bless us to amass the special rahmah and barakah of this month. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he has given us one more year to make him happy. The month of Ramadan is the month of the revelation of the Quran. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this month he gives us the ability and willingness to complete one Quran and help us recite at least one juz with translation and tafsir on a daily basis. This is one of the virtuous actions of Rasulullah wasallam. Archangel Jibreel used to make Rasulullah wasallam complete the Quran in this month. May he help us to retain the path of the completion of the Quran during this month so that we may be able to understand the word of Allah in the best possible way. We may be able to follow our religion easily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ability to spread his word, his religion and his Quran to others and make it easy for us to follow it. We all want to reform ourselves. How do you think it's possible? When we learn and understand it, understand each and every order, only then will we be able to comply. So when we are able to understand the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only then we will be able to lead a life according to the Quran and the Sunnah and be an example for others if Allah wills. And by this we can become the favorite of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy with us. We all want to be among those who are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how? We ask. The way to that is easy. We have to get ourselves attached to the Quran. It will be advantageous when we understand the Quran, understand the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understand favored and virtuous deeds, understand life of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adopt his ethics and manners and act upon his sunnah. Then, if Allah wills, we will be able to come out from the clutches of innovations, superstition, misguidance and shirk. The person who indulges in shirk will never be able to go to Jannah. And how and why do we unknowingly indulge in shirk when we are away from the Quran and the sayings of our Prophet So when we have learned and understood the Quran, only then we will be able to do the deeds which will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us. Even though we may be doing a lot of things thinking that they are virtuous, but they might be innovations or shirk. These are not the things that make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. Rather, they may resent him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Who are the righteous slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They are not those who become sages, nor those who are bearded, wearing thobes, nor those who claim big but have no knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah, nor do they follow the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the teachings of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they are those who follow the guidance of the Qur'an and Sunnah abundantly. To act upon it is only possible when we are able to understand. So that means the righteous slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who give the Qur'an its due right. Those who have the knowledge of the Qur'an. It's written in the Qur'an. Those who have the knowledge of the Qur'an are the ones 
who have understood the identity and recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they have recognized the identity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than others. They fear the resentment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of this fear, they keep protecting themselves from sins, keep reforming themselves. They always think of their afterlife. They never forget the fact that they have to go in their graves. This is the reason that they repent abundantly, give voluntary and involuntary charity, are steadfast in their fasts and are always in search of favored blessings. They never think about any favored blessing as small, pitiable or acting upon which will not matter. The moment they are able to do any good deed, they do it. They don't wait until others have done it or have given charity. They keep doing good deeds and fear whether those will be accepted or not. It is said that the ones who run the most after any favored blessings are those who have committed a major sin in their past. And a feeling of regret is so huge that they don't understand how to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. They are the ones who keep doing good deeds and fear Allah at the same time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors those who though have committed sins but then repent and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing virtuous deeds. Not those who even though have not committed any major sin but are proud and arrogant about their good deeds thinking that they will be the first to enter Jannah. Therefore, the one who reads the Quran has understood the very identity and recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has understood the majesty, the supreme power and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is beyond description. Such a person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will not let the love of this life enter his heart. The favors of this world will not affect him. He will not go running after them nor give himself up for them. Then what does he do with himself and his life? He gives up his life, his faculties, his wealth, his everything to understand the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to spread it to others. He tirelessly does this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearing whether his deeds have been accepted or not fearing his own shortcomings. He does not have any desire for this world, but his only wish is to meet his creator, nourisher. The life of this world for such a mu'min is like a prison. Come, let us see why it is necessary that we should understand the Quran with its translation and tafsir, follow it and change our lives according to it. How will that be beneficial to us? Number one. To gain knowledge of the Quran is obligatory. We will be questioned about it. Number two, it becomes easy to walk on the path of guidance, evident that such a person will not do any shirk or indulge in innovation as he would have understood which of his actions will take him to Jannah, make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with him because nothing but the road to guidance will lead to Jannah. Number three, such a man comes out from the clutches of superstition, hopelessness, pessimism, innovations, shirk and misguidance and almost all sins. Number four, such a man is able to understand the very identity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, he gains proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and starts to feel the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he now understands the majesty, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is beyond description and the supreme power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this he gains from the Quran. Moreover, he will start earning forgiveness for his sins, starts earning favored blessings and reward because reciting one letter of the Quran will earn you 10 blessings. That is when you don't know the translation. But when you read the Quran with translation and have gained the comprehension, then that will earn you extra blessings. The recitation of the Quran has a soothing and calming effect on the hearts and is a way to tranquility. When we recite the Quran, restless, restlessness of soul, always distraught and upset, agitation and disturbance of hearts, discontentment, hopelessness is all taken away. Subhanallah. The Quran will come as a beautiful friend in our graves. 
in our gloomy, dark, dingy and cramped graves, if we get the Quran as a beautiful friend, then our graves will be enlightened. What else will we want? Don't we at times think and get disturbed by the thought of our grave? The more we understand and build a solid relationship with the Quran, the better we can hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts will find peace and tranquility. We would want to do more good deeds. He blesses us with the ability and willingness to do more good and we won't get tired of doing them. This is from among the favors and gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one gets the ability and willingness to do more good deeds and others could benefit from him. On the day of judgment, the Quran will come as an intercessor for those who used to read it. In this world, we generally intercede for wrong reasons and also we give a lot of money. But on the day of judgment, when it's very harsh, when we will be in need of some helper, intercessor, even our own blood relations will not help us. On that day, Quran will come as an intercessor for those who used to read it. The one who is an expert in reciting the Quran will be among the well-disposed angels who will be the writers of the Quran. Whom can we say is an expert in reciting the Quran? Such a person is able to read the Quran with tajweed, has heard the translation and tafsir, he has comprehended the meaning of the Quran, he now understands the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a person gains guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even from daily activities. Let us see how we can gain such type of guidance. Ta'aruf-i Quran bar Ramadan Those who read the Quran daily with understanding, then whatever occurs in their daily life or whatever situation they are faced with, the Quran will offer guidance according to the situation one is faced with. A person attached to the Quran will then be blessed with an unseen guidance. That is why it is said to read the Quran as if it is being revealed upon you. Especially if the Quran is read in this manner, then the reader can feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conversing with them. Then one can feel that these rulings are for them and not just for those who have passed away. No, they are for us. This guidance has been sent for us. We need to absorb within us the effect of this guidance. We need to change ourselves. The Quran is the only book that transforms the lives of humankind. They gain an uprising effect. Particularly, humans will gain a transformation within their hearts and will then start acquiring the nafs, purification of the self. Hearts will start to be cleansed. Those inner desires that accumulate in your heart and whatever appears in the heart that is what you are going to do. Example, my heart is wanting to do this and that and this is what I am going to do. My body, my decision. Also with this is the love for the dunya, world. The inner desires, the longing for worldly happiness and running around just for this will all start to escape the heart because now the purpose is in front of you. Therefore, you can acquire interests in your life, but the real interests are in gaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's approval, his closeness and becoming one of those he is happy with. Now, one will start worrying about their alakhira, afterlife. When you are not attached to the Quran, one has worries. Example, tomorrow what will happen to us? Always worrying about the future and reminiscing sadly about the past. However, when humans attach themselves to the Quran, their only concerns are for time in the grave, life after death. And they always attain the sense of being a mere slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When humans start emulating this way of life, then all their actions will solely be carried out to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will refrain from displeasing him as they will be conscious that their Lord is watching them. These type of God-conscious people will not want to lose their good deeds and at the same time their hearts will start to slowly soften. For others, they will start to become well-wishers and will passionately start developing an empathetic and sympathetic nature. But the 
biggest quality within a person which will be formed is ahsas caring nature when a person instills within them a caring nature then one can actually feel others pain and suffering when they can feel others pain then these people attached to the quran can offer a caring assistance if a person is insensitive then if an accident occurs someone needs help someone is dying someone is losing blood instead of getting these people out of difficulty or even taking them to the hospital what actually happens a video is made and they are very happy while doing this and the person is dying in front of them then next uh, these videos are uploaded with lots of pride and arrogance as if they have achieved something very big this is the style of behavior of an insensitive person on the contrary there are those who have empathy sympathy and are caring towards others these types of people will in some way or another take these people to the hospital those who attach themselves to the quran not only does it transform them and their hearts but for those who attach to it their spiritual needs are satisfied quran develops contentment and tranquility in a person as well as nafsul mutmain it also helps one become determined humble thankful well wisher empathetic and it develops a caring attitude towards others those who attach themselves to the quran will eradicate all fears and sorrows of the world and the hereafter they will become free yes they will become free from all sorrows of this world and the hereafter allah subhanahu wa taala states in the quran surah al baqarah verse number 38 Translation, and when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. This is a very beautiful verse. On one side the purpose of life is being informed to the son of Adam it is being stated here now that you are going to dwell on the earth that this is what you should do on the other hand in this verse a secret to refrain from fear and sorrows on the earth and the hereafter is also being stated this verse is historically from the time when Adam al Islam was lured by the shaitan into eating a fruit that was forbidden to eat by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala When Adam al Islam realized his mistake he had deep regrets embarrassment and was sorrowful then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam al Islam a very beautiful prayer of forgiveness which he had asked for this prayer is stated in the Quran surah al araf verse 23 Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin Translation our lord we have done an injustice to ourselves and in case you do not forgive us and have mercy on us indeed we both will definitely be among the losers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted Adam al Islam's repentance and said you all go and dwell on the earth then it is being stated that you will receive my guidance meaning the Quran and the prophets sayings as in hadiths then those who follow these guidances will not have any fear upon them and will not grieve فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Therefore, those who will follow these guidances like in the Quran and follow it, they will be free from all fears and sorrows. Their hearts will be content in the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their faces will always be smiling and their hearts will be peaceful and tranquil. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the son of Adam on the earth, he also equipped them with, ad- with guidance. in all tribes prophets were sent and so were holy books those tribes who followed this guidance and brought faith upon their prophets firstly their collective and individual lifestyle changed their lives were uplifted how because of following the guidance because allah subhanahu wa taala has stated that he will make free of all sorrows and worries therefore if we grasp the quran understand it and follow it we will attain faith and spiritual strength the love of allah subhanahu wa taala will prevail over us 
and we will become from the loved ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inside a person, a trust and belief will develop which will free one from all fears and sorrows. The Holy Quran is the last holy book to be revealed to the most honored amongst prophets Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quran took 23 years to be revealed completely. Particularly, revelations and verses were sent according to the needs of the people of that time. The teachings of the Quran are more superior than any other religious teachings. It is easy and complete. Therefore, we need to follow it and become an example from its teachings for others. In the Quran, Surah Shu'ara, verse 192-195, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْزِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينَ Translation Indeed, this is a revelation from the Lord of the Universe which the truthful spirit has carried down to your heart that you might become one of those who warn others on behalf of Allah, a revelation in clear Arabic language. Here the glorious Quran has given us a beautiful introduction. The Quran has not been revealed just to read in Ramadan or upon being ill or to eradicate some difficulty or just for blessing for the deceased souls. We are not seen not to read the Quran in Ramadan, but amongst all months in Ramadan, more recitation should be done as Ramadan is the month of the Quran. During Ramadan, Jibreel al Islam would daily review the Quran. This is what we call Dorai Quran. Therefore, in Ramadan, not only recitation of Quran should be done, but tafsir or understanding should be carried out too. The sunnah will be attained by doing this. The understanding of the Quran should be carried out. Because in the year of demise of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he reviewed the Quran twice in one Ramadan. Usually in Ramadan, the Quran was reviewed once. Therefore, to do the Raya Quran is a recommended act. A question arises, why to read the Quran with translation and tafsir and with understanding? Compared to other days, why is it one gains more reward for this in Ramadan. In normal days, reading one letter of the Quran gains 10 rewards. But in Ramadan, the reward multiplies. In Ramadan, the act of Umrah is rewarded the amount of reward gained from doing Hajj. Carrying out good deeds, voluntary and voluntary charity are rewarded from 10 to 700 folds more. Likewise, in the last nights of Ramadan, there is night known as Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated these nights are known to be better than 1000 months. It is recommended to carry out good deeds in these nights. Apart from doing Dawrah Quran in Ramadan, one should at least read one juz with Tajweed. Now we are not just saying that in Ramadan you have to do Tafsir, Dawrah Quran, read with Tajweed and even listen to the Quran in the Tarawi prayer and forget the rest of the months. No but to read it daily with translation and the tajweed. Now, make an intention, as we are forgetful. We forget a lot of things, but how is it possible for we forget the words of Allah? Let's hope we never forget any of this. Once people go over the translation and tafsir, they then keep the Quran closed. Look, if you have a good understanding of the Quran, then what should you do? You should start teaching it. Therefore, this journey of going through tafsir, tajweed and translation of the Quran should be till our last breath. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, goodness and blessings. Do we need this in a specific month or days? No, all year and all throughout our lives. In fact, every moment and all the time, we need His mercy. It is better to wake up for fajr prayer and after the prayer, read the supplications for protection from plots and whisperings of shaitan, from evil eye and from black magic. Then uh, one should read dua istikhara, prayer of seeking counsel and make the intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever you are intending to do will be approved by him. Because all the time we are making decisions and thinking about making decisions, 
then what appears in our thinking what appears in our thoughts sometimes skepticism sometimes suspicions sometimes we start thinking bad about others humans can free themselves of this by gaining allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and daily listening to the quran with translation and tafsir listening to at least 7 8 or 10 verses will give you spiritual nourishment we all eat breakfast afternoon meal as well as evening meal has it ever occurred that we forget to eat all day mashallah you all are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation come let's promise to ourselves that after this ramadan we will not forget the quran especially we will try to incorporate the translation tafsir and tajweed in our daily lives if we have good knowledge of the quran then you should start teaching it without hesitation we are giving a link in the description box where you can join our whatsapp and telegram channels you can be added to these and can benefit from in fi sabilillah in allah's way translation and tafsir of the quran not only this but with each word arabic grammar will be taught and corrections will be briefed all of the books of fiqh one by one with tafsir will be taught all of this has been organized and the gift for a good cause hadia is that you all pray for the whole team that allah subhanahu wa taala makes us capable of doing more good and gives us steadfastness may he forgive our mistakes and shortcomings and may he be pleased with us all amin allahumma amin this is a prayer from me to you all may allah subhanahu wa taala give you all the capability to participate in this course and after finishing it to become part of our team with us you can spread the word of islam to others o oh allah subhanahu wa taala make us all remain close to the quran till our last breath so that we establish a strong connection to it and each day we be guided through it and we recite it correctly with tajweed and understand it rightly with tafsir o oh allah so that we take your verses into consideration and ponder over them and study them we understand its halal and haram orders get the lessons taught by its verses where there is advice we take it so that we gain self control and do our correction o oh allah enlighten our hearts from quran's light we have to recite the quran with sincerity with longing and desire to make our connection with allah strong we have to recite it so that allah opens our chests for its understanding so that understanding allah's word acting upon it and spreading it to others becomes easy for us due to the blessings of allah's word he pours his blessings upon us o oh allah give us all the opportunity to fulfill the rights of the quran so that on the day of judgment this quran becomes a testimony for us in muslim it is stated that hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wal quran hujjatu laka aw alayk the quran is evidence for you or against you look if we fulfill the quran's rights then the quran will become a beautiful friend of ours it will become a light in the darkness of our graves it will speak for us on the day of judgment and fight for us that allah this person used to recite me with correct the jweed he understood me and acted upon me let's place him in heaven surah taha ayat number 123 states faman ittaba hudaya fala yadillu wa la yashqa then whoever follows my hidaya guidance he shall not remain in misguidance nor shall be unhappy here we are being told that whoever holds on to the quran won't be misled because he who holds on to the quran holds on to allah the quran is a, is called a rope whose one end is with allah and the other with whoever holds on to it to know quran's rights and its manners is very necessary the lectures are available on our youtube channel you'll get the links in the groups and if you are listening to our daura e quran on youtube then you can get the links from the description box do listen to them Now let's talk a little about the virtues of Ramadan. As you all know, Ramadan is the ninth month of the lunar year. In Ramadan, Allah pours His special mercy 
and blessings upon us. Ramadan is the month of the commencement of subsistence. It's the month of patience, of self-control, of goodness, of gaining piety and of entering heaven. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, it is stated, إِذَا دَخَلَ شَحْرُ رَمَضَانَ فُطِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَغُلِّكَتْ أَبْوَابُ جَحَنَّمْ وَالْسُلْسِلَةِ الشَّعْطِينَ Allah Messenger said, When the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of the heaven are opened, and the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are chained. To fast in Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. In a hadith, it states, Hazrat Abu Huraira says, A Bidwin came to the Prophet and said, Tell me of such a deed as to make me enter paradise if I do it. The Prophet said, Worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him. Offer the five prescribed compulsory prayers perfectly. Pay the compulsory charity and the zakah and fast in the month of Ramadan. We should never forget that without any excuse, we cannot leave a fast of Ramadan because fasting in Ramadan is obligatory and no one can enter heaven without fulfilling this obligation. On the Day of Judgment, like the Quran, our fast will also become a testimony for us. The person who fasts in Ramadan, prays Tarawih in the nights of Ramadan, will be with the truthful and the martyrs on the Day of Judgment. To recite the Quran in Tarawih in the nights of Ramadan and to understand it with translation becomes a very good way of earning rewards. This is the reason behind the virtues of the month of Ramadan. The Quran was revealed in this month. Surah Al-Baqarah 185 states, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran During the month of Ramadan, the Quran was sent down. In a hadith in Al-Bukhari, it states, Taharraw laylat al-Qadri fi al-Witri min al-Ashri al-Awakhiri min Ramadan Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Search for the night of Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10 days of Ramadan. It states in Surah Al-Qadr, verse number 1, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Qadr. Indeed, we sent it, the Quran, down during the night of decree. Worshipping in the night of Qadr is better than 83 years of worship. So while Searching for the night of Qadr in the last 10 days of Ramadan, we should try to do many good deeds, worship a lot and also recite the Quran a lot. We should do the Raya Quran and try to attain an understanding of the Quran. We should pray for our forgiveness, sit in itikaf because whatever worship is done in the night of Qadr, it acts as a reason for forgiveness of our previous sins. Ibn Majah states, a hadith in Ibn Majah states, Verily, this month has presented itself to you. There is a night within it that is better than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of it has been deprived of all good. None is deprived of its good but that he is truly deprived. Meaning, the one who doesn't benefit from the night of other, who does not worship, who doesn't ask for Allah's forgiveness, he is very unlucky. May Allah give us the opportunity to benefit from this night. It is recommended to make this, this dua in the night of Qadr. Allahumma inna ka'afu tuhibbu la'afu fa'afu anni. Allah, you are the most forgiving and you love to forgive, so forgive me. Ramadan comes with a lot of goodness and blessings. It is the month to prepare for the hereafter. We should happily wait for it and try to gather all its benefits. Every moment of Ramadan is very precious. And Allah blesses the night of Qadr to lucky people. May Allah provide us with the opportunity to do as many good deeds as we can in Ramadan and to give charity, to worship, to sit in itikaf in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, grant us His forgiveness. May He forgive all our past sins in this Ramadan. May Allah choose us for His religion. May He make it easy for us to understand the religion, to act upon it and to spread it to others. If our parents are not in this world anymore, then may Allah make us away for their forgiveness. 
and make us a continuous act of charity for them. May Allah provide us the opportunity to do a lot of good deeds in Ramadan to spread it to others and may He accept all that we try. We should wait happily for this month to arrive. On the 29th day of Sha'ban, one should recite this dua upon seeing the moon. Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil yumni wal imani wal salamati wal islami rabbi wa rabbukallah. O oh Allah, make it a start full of peace and faith, safety and Islam. My Lord and your Lord is Allah. Now I'm going to answer some of your frequently asked questions. The first question is that, can we recite? وَبِسَوْمِ غَادٍ نَوَيْتُ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَان At the time of Sahri. Reciting these kinds of prayers at the time of Sahri is not recommended because the intention is from the heart. So Hazrat Muhammad Wasallam didn't tell us to recite a prayer from the tongue. That is, it's not proven from the sunnah because you woke up in the morning for Sahri because you had the intention. In your heart, you know that you've woken up to fast. And Imam Ahmad who says that the whole month's intention for fasting can also be done only once. This means that Ramadan has come. You know that you have to fast on all the days of Ramadan. Because once you leave one fast, then even if you fast your whole lifetime, still you cannot get the reward for that one fast. This is such a scary thing to leave a fast without an excuse. Similarly, some people say, that it is recommended to open fast with salt. But there is nothing like this. Actually, it is recommended to open your fast with a fresh date, dry date or water. Nevertheless, the recommended dua for opening a fast is Thirst is gone, the veins are wet and the reward is confirmed by the will of God. Now let's get to know why Allah has made fasting obligatory upon us. What was the purpose? What quality did Allah want to develop in us? We get the answer from Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 183, which states, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. Here it's being told that fasting has been obligatory on all nations. And because all nations needed that they had piety in them, so we are being told that fasting has been made obligatory so that we become pious. So that the quality of piety develops in us because it is quite necessary due to piety our faith becomes strong due to it we obey allah's commands we abstain from associating partners with allah we abstain from innovations in religion and slandering it is due to piety that we believe in allah as our one and only lord we love one allah we stay away from all bad things from lying from backbiting from wrongdoings all of this is from one quality and that is piety. Because this is the power of a believer. This is the spiritual power. This is the power that makes us do good deeds, makes us run towards doing good and makes us stay away from sinful acts. Any bad thing we do, we get this bad feeling in our hearts. What is this? This is piety. Piety is actually the feeling of being answerable to Allah, fearing Him. It develops this belief in our hearts that Allah is the creator, owner, judge, the provider and sustainer. And this piety develops the belief that there is the hereafter, the day of judgment. There is a day when we will die. We all know that death comes to everyone. No one lives forever. But the belief in the hereafter is very necessary. When we will have this belief, then we will have the fear of being answerable to Allah. And only then will we correct our actions. It is necessary to believe in heaven and hell and piety develops this. Piety is that spiritual power and that immense feeling and fear which on one side 
makes a person run after good deeds and on the other side makes him abstain from bad deeds. A pious man is very careful that whether he knowingly or knowingly did anything bad or whether he did anything that angers Allah, whether he backed from any good act. In Ramadan, the pious person runs after getting close to Allah. He fasts, observes the five prayers in a sincere way and in their time. He observes the Ravi, the Hajjud, Nawafil and goes through the Quran and similarly gives zakat, voluntary and involuntary charity and considers the needs of the poor. He does not care about only his food and water but also takes care of the food and water of the poor, helps them to open their fasts. And he does not only abstain from eating and drinking but also from haram deeds of his eyes, ears, tongue and others. He stays away from backbiting, lying, fighting and from shameless acts. He sits in etikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan. He cries and asks for Allah's forgiveness and pleads for his mercy and blessings. In Ramadan and especially the last 10 days of Ramadan, he becomes fully devoted to pleasing Allah. A hadith in Bukhari and Muslim states, وَالصَّوْمُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْرِي بِهِ Fasting is for me and I shall reward for it. Allah also values such his believers. The reward is endless. Allah has not told how much it is. It is so much that on that day we'll get to know it. O oh Allah, grant us your forgiveness in this month of Ramadan and give us the opportunity to go through the Quran and to recite it. O oh Allah, may we pray in these nights and give charity. O oh Allah, may we gather a lot of good deeds and all the blessings, benefits and rewards that we can in this month of Ramadan. May we become close to you and may we please you. Guide us, O oh Allah, make it easy for us to understand the Quran, act upon it and to spread it to others. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Take care. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته